today i am going to uh, discuss the uh, importance of postural correction so myself uh, dr keshavan babu i am a physiotherapist post studied sai in coe aurangabad so the main uh, importance of postural correction is that uh, so many athletes are generally having uh, a very good fit- fitness even though so few people have got some muscle tightness and uh, less flexibility so for them so it is better to do postural Uh, correction so uh, i am going to start about uh, normal definition of posture so what in by posture posture can be defined as the relative arrangement of different parts of the body with line of gravity if you take the different parts of the body like you can say foot is a one segment of the body leg thigh uh, pelvis and trunk and head so these are the different segments of the body but they are aligned they are aligned uh, in close relation to with each other uh, so that can be defined to, as a posture sorry to disturb uh, dr shoban your voice is lacking i guess there is problem with your bandwidth so you can switch off your camera and then you can do it i guess that will be better yes ma'am am i audible now yeah you are audible yes you are thank you yeah okay okay sure so what i am discussing is uh, posture posture can be defined as the relative arrangement of different body parts of the body with line of gravity like if we say different arrangements means like a foot is a segment a segment thigh is a segment pelvis is a one segment as well as the entire spine is one segment then followed by the head so these are the different segments of the body but they are aligned with each other they are stuck on on top of other so in order to maintain a proper line of gravity with each other so that is how the posture can be defined but posture generally so there are uh, there are uh, generally are two types of posture one is static posture and another, another one is a dynamic posture static posture is is nothing but the segments are aligned and maintained in a uh, static way the sitting is a static posture standing is a static posture sleeping is a one type of static posture so this is a kind of examples for the static posture but when it comes to the posture the body is in a continuous motion sorry to disturb you advocate. again Clear yes you are audible but your slides are not like uh, visible so can you just check that once is is it okay ma'am now no it is not i can only see your front uh, like the starting slide so i do, i can't see the next slides no uh no no shoban what you can do is like exit once and then you can again uh, start the screen share i guess that will work now it... yes now it is now we now can is it visible ma'am yes now it is visible thank you dr shubhan oh okay okay ma'am so here actually uh, here is some network issue there actually the center is almost uh, out of the city too much so but i'm trying my best okay so uh, there are i'm speaking about uh, different types of posture static dynamic posture So, why do I mean by static posture? Static posture is nothing but things are aligned and are maintained in a static way. Like if you say sitting is a one kind of static posture, standing is a one kind of static posture, sleep is a one kind of static posture. There are different types of derived static postures are there. So those are all nothing but they are like they are they are maintained with each other in order to maintain our body position. Like uh, I say dynamic posture, like dynamic dynamic posture is nothing but the position of the body is uh, in a continuous moving motion like you can say walking running you can say sprinting any kind of sport activity coming under dynamic postures so before going into the uh, little bit depth of the posture correction so let me give a brief uh, introduction about the biomechanics of the posture so how how does the posture is going to maintain so i think uh, you guys like being a coach and all those are attending uh, this class scientific staff and support staff so they might be already have some idea regarding the line of gravity center of gravity and base of support so what do i mean by line of gravity line of gravity is a kind of 
uh, a vertical line which is passing through the, the body towards the ground so whenever the line of gravity is close proximity to close proximity to the segments of the body then only uh, the that particular joint or segment is in a proper posture so center of gravity is the point where entire object of the mass is situated very close to uh, to the uh, for example in, in human beings so the center of gravity is very close to the s2 level so as the person is very taller so the center of gravity can be shifted a little bit higher so it can be differ depending upon the position of the human being generally in a uh, normal anatomical position center of gravity is approximately at the s2 level so when you take the base of support base of support is nothing but how much the object how much the person is supporting the area of the uh, surface of the air like when you are standing with a wide uh, support of your feet then the base of support is going to become a very large as if you are standing in a single uh, limb like single limb standing the base of support is very going to uh, like the base of support is decreasing drastically so which make you uh, unbalanced so these are the common uh, terminology for i'm going into a deep dive of the posture so you can see here so this is the first uh, uh, the diagram is showing the center of gravity so how it is uh, falling in between the base of support if the line of gravity is falling within the base of support the person is going to be very stable otherwise if his base of gravity is fall, uh, away from the base of support the person is become very unstable so second you can see so when the person is uh, changing the a little bit so as you can see the line of gravity is going a bit away from the base support so which makes the person unstable so unless and until he has a good uh, stability like you should you should have a good balance and coordination and good neuromuscular control so these are uh, these are all the things which makes the person very stable so as you see the pictures which uh, the, the diagram c so as the person is bending uh, towards the right side so uh, towards the left side sorry so the center of gravity almost is going away from the base of support so still the person can maintain uh, this position for a short period of time if he is a very athletic person but as a normal person cannot maintain this uh, posture for even uh, a few seconds so which makes them vulnerable to lose the balance so as I, as you can see the base of support how the base of support differs from individual to individual so he is a, here is a small child small kid so the base of support is going to be a little bit higher because the entire weight of the child is going to be uh, situated more on the top of the body is more where the of the child so when it comes to the bodybuilder like a adult human being a male adult human being it is almost uh, equal to s2 uh, like you can say s1 so but when it comes to the females so most of the, uh, for most of the female uh, the weight is going to be situated around the waist and thigh region so that is how the base of support is going to as far as the center of gravity, the center of gravity is going to be situated there so you can see few diagrams here so it is a different different kind of positions how the your line of gravity is aligned with your base of support so like whenever you are uh, limits of stability position so like your balance is going to be uh, very uh, 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 unstable and it will make you vulnerable to loss of loss your balance so when you bend forward so that is how you are pushing your line of gravity away from the away from the base of support so these are the few things so so correct posture is the position in which minimum stress is applied to each joint so whenever the person is maintaining proper anatomical position with good posture so you are going to put very less stress on your uh, joints and muscles so the bad posture do not always cause symptoms but over the time they may do so like whenever like if few people may have forward head posture few people few people may have uh, uh, more lumbar lordosis but they don't have any symptoms but if you if they do maintain this uh, position for a prolonged period of time so they may be vulnerable to have pain so eventually the forces are going to alter the entire line of gravity and uh, the center of gravity is going to alter uh, with this bad posture and they can make the person to have injuries like whenever the uh, person is having some kind of you just think that uh, a boxer is having more kyphotic posture and rounded shoulders but 
if he is maintaining that posture initially so he is not having any symptoms but uh, down the line so he is going to have some problems at the shoulder and some he may be having some strains at the upper back region so because of so all the muscles on the posterior part is going to get elongated so if he is uh, that he is using that elongated muscles more and more so which is eventually going to cause some strains in that uh, region so that is how bad posture may not always lead uh, cause symptoms initially but Uh, but down the line but it it causes some uh, problems so generally bad posture causes soft tissue imbalance so it should be corrected before you start professional training so when it comes to athletic population so it is better to do some kind of postural evaluation so that they na they may not be prone to have some kind of issues like you can say at lumbar region if the posture is not good at the lumbar region so they having kind of back pain may be coming so if you not other problem like pain discoid pain you can say muscle arteries muscle catch so hip issues knee issues okay Not only hip issues so entire uh, kinetic chain is going to be affected posture is muscles that are strong flexible and easily adaptable to not only whenever the person is good posture so it requires the muscles to have a good flexible muscles and at the same time the muscles need to be strong muscles also easy to adapt to the environment the environment in which you are training so generally the bad posture can lead to uh, like i can't generally two types so postural deformity and structural deformity postural deformities are nothing but like a uh, person having poor posture so it can lead to small uh, problems as i said earlier that poor posture can can cause pain okay so those kind of things muscle imbalances and all but structural problem is by birth only few people have uh, uh, problem at the muscles problem at the joints okay so these are uh, uncorrectable things which already makes the person to have more problems with the posture so these are the things which can be corrected by the orthopedic surgeon uh, so are which can uh, which can be seen by uh, higher levels like you can say congenital abnormalities like the person already having some problem with the bones of the neck some problem with the bones of the back or knees genu varum genu valgum so already these are the some kind of congenital problems which can be acquired which can be developed uh, in fetus of the mother womb so you can see so as you can see there are different types of posture here so this is the diagram so first is the sway back posture second is the lumbar lordosis third is the thoracic kyphosis fourth is the forward head posture and final one is the good posture so what is happening so when you see the Uh, good good posture means you have to take a line there is a rope so which has to hang it from the top of your ear lobes to the lateral part of your feet exactly there is a part called lateral malleolus lateral part of the bone there is a bump on the lateral part of the bone of your uh, foot that bone is called lateral malleolus so you have to drop a, a rope from the middle part of your ear until until to your lower part of your feet so which is determines how your posture is aligned with each other so if you see that is how a good posture looks like but it, when it comes to the forward head posture as you can see in forward head posture so the head is protruded more forward so this kind of posture can be seen more in population like those uh kids and especially like nowadays all the sports uh Uh, like athletes are also using uh, phone continuously so they they use like forward bending repeatedly over a period of time so which can cause some neck pains like already already are having this posture for a period of time and still and uh, and still they are playing games but sometimes they may prone to have some cervical neck pain some back pain part of the muscles already getting elongated and which makes them uh to lose the some elastic properties so which which, which makes the muscle uh, to become more weak so already if you are playing with a forward head posture so already the muscles on the back part of your neck are weak so which make you uh, which make you to have some muscle strain so eventually the person develops some more uh, on the posterior part of the neck and he may have uh, other problems so like it may lead to you can say disc problem as well it lead to pinched nerve as well it can cause kind of uh, you know so as a outlet syndrome like uh, there is a vascular problem as well so like not only that so it leads to so many other problems so it is better to get evaluation so before uh, it is becoming very serious next posture is a thoracic uh, kyphosis in thoracic kyphosis as you can see there is a hump posture at the thoracic back region 
so here entirely the back is become c shape from uh, back to front so which is putting more stress around the back region so the the, the athlete who is in this kind of is more have shoulder problems especially shoulder and neck problems so which is uh, also causing uh, rounded shoulders rounded shoulders are nothing but the internal rotated shoulders the shoulders are rotating inwards and which is make them uh, which is causing them to have a decreased pressure at the shoulder shoulder joint so especially if you take the plastic kyphosis posture the front part of the muscle, chest muscles are becoming very very so as you can see like uh, pectoral is major and pectoral is minor so those are the like you can say shoulder flexors so those muscles are attaching to the post uh, pectoral is major is attaching to the humerus arm bone so this is your arm bone and if you go to the back side there is a scapula bone pectoral is minor is attaching to the scapula bone so whenever these two muscles are tight they will pull the scapula and humerus close to the pectoral muscles so that is how the space between the shoulder joint is going to decreases there are few tendons like there are few muscles like you can say rotator cuff muscles which are going through that space which will cause the shoulder joint to become stiff and which decrease the space in the shoulder joint and the person is eventually develop shoulder pain so you can see the person who is having shoulder pain you might check that the those athletes may have some um, excessive thoracic kyphosis like the postural muscles like back side of the upper back muscles especially thoracic muscles uh, may get weak especially you can say rhomboids scapular retractors you can say trapezius here especially middle trapezius and lower trapezius are becoming very weak uh, when compared to the upper thoracic uh, upper trapezius upper, tra upper trapezius you can see especially below the ear so there is a muscle upper trapezius as as a being a coach i think you might have aware of upper trapezius trap so that muscle is becoming very very tight so that is how the upper here uh, the person is going to develop uh, this, there is some kind of mus muscular imbalances so here in in our terms we can say some upper cross syndrome upper cross syndrome means especially in thoracic kyphosis the person is going to have uh, some uh, muscle tightness in the proximal neck and muscle weakness in the lower lower neck back side of i'm talking about the back side of the neck so upper neck flexors are are become weak lower neck flexors are becoming tight whereas coming to the extensors of the neck the upper neck extensors are becoming tight and lower neck extensors are becoming weak so like opposite way so these are this is how the muscles are going to become weak so it is called uh, upper cross syndrome so that is how the person is going to uh, develop some muscular imbalances so you need to identify you need to incorporate few uh, postural correction exercises so here is the best thing is that you have to strengthen uh, the shoulder retractors back scapular muscles shoulder retractors you should, you should strengthen as well as you should strengthen the middle fibers as well as the lower fibers of the trapezius and you should be you should incorporate stretching to the upper trapezius as well as you can strengthen the serratus anterior muscles and rotator cuff muscles that is how you are going to maintain a good posture in the neck and as well as you can maintain some chin tucks that means chin tuck is nothing but you have to pull the chin uh, back side and you should lift up so that is how you are maintaining a proper posture at the neck region so that is how uh, these are some kind of uh, postural correction exercises again i will be reviewing uh, in the final stage how to correct thoracic kyphosis uh, to uh, to abolish uh, sh shoulder problem as well as neck problems so now come to the lumbar lordosis here lumbar lordosis as you can see the person is having more anteriorly rotated forward pelvis the pelvis is rotated more forward okay anterior means forward rotate tilt means rotation both pelvis are rotating anteriorly you can see so the back of the uh, this person in the lumbar lordosis all is elevated so the spine is going the spine is developed more arch in the lumbar region whereas the pelvis both pelvis both pelvis are rotated forward both pelvis are rotated anteriorly so this is called anterior pelvic tilt so normally the uh, the degree of anterior pelvic tilt is around 4 to 10 degrees but if it is more than 10 degrees you can say it is anterior pelvic tilt few people may not have even they are having anterior pelvic tilt but that is okay but actually in severe cases few people are having but uh, as of now the research is saying that lumbar 
the excessive lumbar lordosis in association with the pelvic tilt uh, not causing much problems but still but still as a being a coach as a being a athlete you have to aware of these postures and you need to correct the problem like here what will happen so especially in lumbar lordosis the hip flexors hip flexors are going to become tight so like uh, there are you can say the sartorius uh, rectus femoris okay and iliopsoas so few muscles are there so these three muscles as well as uh, the quadriceps muscles so these are going to become uh, tight in the front region if you take the back side muscles hip extensors the gluteus maximus hamstring okay so these muscles are going to become weak so you have to it is like a, here also you can say so in our physiotherapy um pedagogy so this term is known as a lower cross syndrome so here the lower back especially the lumbar extensors are going to become tight so like erector spinae as well as small uh, uh, small muscles of the lumbar spine like multifidus rotator so these muscles are going to become very tight in the lumbar region so that is how so you have to strengthen uh, the muscles which are becoming very tight uh, very uh, weak like here you have to strengthen the Uh, gluteus maximus and hamstring back side this is a posterior chain musculature so you have to strengthen whereas in the front side hip flexors you have to stretch the hip and you have to stretch the lumbar lower lumbar region like uh, lumbar extensor muscles as well as when it comes to a uh, front side of the abdominals so the entire abdominal muscles are becoming very weak in this lumbar lordosis posture so as already the pelvis is rotated anteriorly so which is cause the the pelvic muscles are more lengthen so that is why you have to be more uh, more focus here uh, about the core muscles core muscles are very very important here so you should strengthen the core muscles you should stretch the hip flexors as well as you should strengthen the gluteus maximus and hamstring muscles extensors of the hip joint and you can stre stretch the lower back muscles especially those are erector spinae muscles like you can say as you can see like uh, there are deadlifts are there like some uh, dead box exercise are exercise are there like some planks exercise are there you can say pelvic bridge single leg pelvic bridge okay all these are some of the exercises which you can incorporate in your training so that you can avoid uh, lumbar lordosis that is how you can maintain some good posture so there is also another posture like sway back posture so in what will happening in sway back posture the person pelvis is shifted more and more forward position so here <coughs> ex, uh, excuse me here the pelvis is shifted more anterior more forward position here it is not going to tilted anteriorly or posteriorly but it is shifted little bit forward so it is also kind of abnormal posture when it compares to a good posture so but so here what you can see so there are few changes will be here so you have to Uh, develop a uh, flat back posture the thoracic region doesn't have much lumbar lordosis as well as the la lumbar region also doesn't have much lumbar lordosis they have mild decrease in curve in the thoracic as well as lumbar region so so it is how this posture can be identified by a, a good postural analysis so these are kind of different postures which you can see in this diagram so you can also see some kind of diagrams here so this is the good posture so how the line of gravity is uh, tracing from uh, ear lobes until to the lateral part of the feet so in anterior pelvic tilt the pelvic the pelvis is tilting anteriorly the pelvis is uh, rotating anteriorly so in third picture the pelvis is rotating posteriorly which is called posterior pelvic tilt so you can see different types of postures how the line of gravity is passing through in relation to the different segments of the body so you can see already i uh, have talked about these types of posture i'm just showing the diagram you can see so as you can see these are also different different types of postures so the lines which are passing from the top is a line of gravity so how your line of gravity is passing in relation to the segments so see the good posture so how the good posture is aligned so relaxed faulty posture kyphosis you can say also say kypholadotic posture this is a sway back posture sway back means the entire pelvis is shifted forward but it is in a mild uh, anterior rotation of the pelvis this is a flat back posture in flat back posture the lumbar lordosis the curve of the lordosis is decreased as well as the thoracic kyphosis is also going to get decreases so round back posture here in round back posture the shoulders are rounded more anteriorly 
and the knees are extended more backward which is called hyper extension of the knees which is also kind of wrong posture so which can be identified by good postural analysis and uh, you can incorporate some uh, so you can find out what are the tight muscles and what are the uh, weak muscles so according to that uh, criteria you have to use the uh, exercise therapeutic protocols to strengthen them and avoid uh, long term problems so as you can see these are the kind of syndromes upper cross syndrome and lower cross syndromes as i have as i have uh, spoken previously so this is how the muscles are these are the uh, in red color these are the muscles which are going to become a uh, tight and in blue in blue color those are the muscles which are going to become weak in a criss cross position so this is how the person is going to develop uh, most uh, problems at the uh, neck region as well as in the lumbar region so these are some of the kind of uh, postural problems so when you see the person from the lateral view from side view so they may develop some different kind of postural problems so which can be started from toe to head region so in toe region you can see clatos clatos are nothing but some kind of curled toes hammer toes flexed knee posture hyper extended knee uh, like you can say genu recurvatum hyper extended knee means the knees are going backwards like excessive anterior pelvic tilt ladosis kyphosis forward head posture like uh, like um, flat foot excessive cavus foot halgus hallux valgus is nothing but so the first part of the first the first toe of the foot is going outward uh, outward position so that is a hallux valgus genu valgum means knocked knees both knees are touching genu varum means the knees are going away from the midline of the body so that is a genu varum so squinting or crossed eye patella means uh, the patella are like uh, the upper part of the, the upper pole of the patella the patella are, is facing towards the midline of the body whereas grasshoppers eye patella means the upper part of the uh, patella is facing outwards like a frog eye how does frog looks like frog eyes are rotating outwards so that is how the grasshopper eye patella looks like scoliosis are another part of the uh, postural deviation so the spine curvature is shifted to one side either it can be right side either it can be left side so these are some kind of postural deviations which can be seen okay so whenever the person is bending his neck forward so he is going to more pressure on the posterior part of the neck either it can be uh, at the neck region either it can be lumbar region as well so you are bending your trunk repeatedly for a continuous or you can say prolonged period of time you are going to stretch your back muscles continuously and those muscles will get weak as well as your contracting muscles front muscles continuously in a shortened position those muscles will get tight so which is a uh, very dangerous thing in the long run so that is why you have to be uh, very cautious about your posture whenever you are in the sitting position whenever you are using your mobile whenever you are whenever you are in front of the uh, system so and also you have to be careful about your athletes so how they are walking how they are running so when it comes to the postural analysis postural correction if you go little bit deep so we can we can say running analysis we can we can say it can be sprinting analysis so those are the different topics which are the beyond uh, scope of my topic as of now so that is how so these are kind of some ergonomic aids how the person is sitting in front of the computer your eyes should be exactly close to you close to the uh, computer monitor and your arm should be very close to the trunk and your foot should be rested on a little bit uh, higher on uh, you should be it should be planted exactly uh, in line to your knee joint so that is how and your back should be rested that is how so you should using some kind of ergonomic uh, uh, points in order to avoid some po postural problems so as you can see so these are the, some kind of lifting uh, uh, positions how you use your uh, back posture and good postures whenever you are using a lifting technique as you can see so you are not supposed to sit forward whenever you are using the lap uh, or you can, you can use any system or laptop anything so your back should be straight your eyes uh look forward exactly to the monitor which should be uh, your eye level so whenever you are bending knees and lifting the heavy weights so which which will make you less vulnerable to have problems at your back region so when you bend your knees and lifting so that is very good but you are not bending 
your knees and continuously bend uh, uh, you are bending your trunk as well and lifting the weight so which is going to put more pressure on the back region which can cause disc problems as well as muscle uh, strains as well so you can see so these are some of the diagrams so but eventually what i would like to say is that postural correction like you have to be it is a it's not a simple thing to say to strengthen this muscle and uh, stretch this muscle so it is better to go through the postural analysis if you if you find out that this athlete is having some problem so you can do postural analysis uh, postural evaluation by the physiotherapist in your, in your center so that they will tell you exactly so what kind of posture is having and which muscle is having uh, tight and which muscle is having more weak so that they can give you a plan they can give you a blueprint exactly according to the individual according to the uh, each athlete it should be customized it's not a general way but more or less as i said earlier that like forward head posture is one of the important things so that is how you have to strengthen your especially upper back muscles especially scapular retractors and the middle fibers and lower fibers of the trapezius uh, but when it comes to uh, front neck region you have to stretch your entire uh, front neck muscles so, but when it comes to lumbar region you have to stretch your hip flexors and strengthen the hip extensors like gluteus maximus those hamstrings you have to maintain good core uh, uh, of the entire abdominal muscles like you can say uh, dead box exercises are there planks exercises exercises are there so those are kind of exercises not only th uh, those two so many exercises are there so those exercises can be incorporated into your uh, daily uh, like uh, two to three times in a uh, week so that is how you should maintain a good proper posture every time so you should maintain the athlete uh, in a very uh, well position like you should have good flexibility as well as strength in the muscles so that is how you, you could uh, improve the performance of the athlete so these are some of the sitting things so you can avoid whenever you are sitting in this position so this is from my side if you have any questions so i am open to the questions thank you very much So I just unmuted, ma'am. You can just uh, if anybody is having questions, okay, they are free. Feel free to ask questions. So I'm very happy to answer. If anybody has any question, right now is the time to ask. Ah, uh, namaste, sir. Hello, yes, namaste. Ah, uh, I'm yes. Gopal Bhai Sharma. Sir, yes, sir, you are audible. मैं लखनऊ से बोल रहा हूँ गोपाल भाई शर्मा वेट लिफ्टिंग कोच हमारे वेट लिफ्टिंग में वेट लिफ्टिंग में हम जब न्यू इंडक्शन करते हैं तो एक्चुअली <coughs> उसमें कुछ बच्चे हमारे जैसे हाइट हाइट की हाइट के भी हम बच्चे कुछ जैसे वन सिक्सटी फाइव वन सेवेंटी सेंटीमीटर के आसपास की जिनकी हाइट होती है बच्चों की तो उन बच्चों में हमने देखा है कि जैसे हम उनको धीरे धीरे मस्कुलरिटी ट्रेन मतलब फिजिकली कैपेसिटी उनको जब ट्रेन करते करते उनका जब हम उनको उनके मतलब अकॉर्डिंग टू लोड लेके जाते हैं तो अपर पार्ट जो जिनकी हाइट ज्यादा होती है उनका थ्रोसिक मतलब थ्रोसिक कैपोसिस वाली जो प्रॉब्लम है ना सर तो ज्यादातर जब वो क्लीन करके जब वो उठते हैं तो उनका अपर पार्ट जो है थोड़ा फॉर्मल हो जाता है तो हम जैसे उसमें हम उनको हाइपर एक्सटेंशन वगैरह अपर बॉडी की एक्सरसाइज वगैरह देते हैं कोर कोर मसल ग्रुप की एक्सरसाइज भी कराते हैं आपकी तरफ से ऐसा कुछ और सजेशन है जो हम उसको और बेटर तरीके से बैलेंस कर सकते हैं क्योंकि ये उसमें ये प्रॉब्लम बहुत आती है जिनकी हाइट ज्यादा होती है स्पेशली हाँ सर ये सर सर एक्चुअली सर सो दथलेट हुई वेरी टाल न so what you do is that you should incorporate especially uh, first of all you should identify so what is the main problem with that athlete so if he is having more arch whenever he is uh, doing a snatch or you can say uh, what do you call clean or jerk so especially most of the time you can say snatch na so whenever they are doing snatch or you can say uh, jerk position so few people may develop some, some kind of kyphosis yeah yeah in the in the clean position yeah yeah you can snatch position, position okay snatch, so snatch position mein nahi aati hai wo ha ha so first of all you have to identify which athlete is 
is having that kind of problem so if he is having na so was okay. you should uh, assess them so those are having na that uh, thoracic kyphosis problem so they may be prone to have shoulder problems as well so the lung so what that thoracic kyphosis na so which is whenever they are lifting the weight so entire that the bar rod the bar rod and weight of the bar is going more anterior to the thoracic spine so making entire back muscles uh, elongated so in, uh, either if they have more strength in their back region while uh, performing these lifts so it is okay but if they are weak then, so eventually what does they do is that they have to have some postural back especially thoracic uh, neck uh, extensors may get strain as well as they may have some disc disc problems as well so that is why very 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 importantly so we have to be more focus about the thoracic flexibility exercises like there are uh, thoracic rotation exercises are there like uh, you can say quadruped thoracic uh, rotation exercises so those things can be incorporated as well as what you have to do is then you have to strengthen your upper back muscles like you can say trapezius is very very important as well as you can uh, incorporate um, Uh, like a superman exercises so like there are static superman exercises as well as you can incorporate some static superman exercises like dynamic dynamic superman exercises as well so when you incorporate those exercises you can uh, you can pretty good at preventing the injuries as well as as i said rotator cuff muscle strength is also very very important so that is how the entire so the upper upper uh, kinetic chain is interconnected so you can prevent the injuries Okay. Thank I hope uh, I answered your question. Thank you, sir. Okay, you are welcome. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Very good. Sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay, sir. If anyone is having questions, please feel to uh, feel free to ask. I guess there is no more questions. Uh, first of all, I like to thank you, Doctor Shubhan Babu, for such wonderful session. and i thank each and every one of you to join thank you very much for the session so thank you all take care